I want to come back to the notion of Uhadi mm -hmm. and come back to Umakweana, mm -hmm. which is the, um, and come back to the woman I know in, um, in the past you've said it was sort of your musical ancestor, which is um, <laughs> Princess Magogo. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that she was very important in your family life, in your childhood, your father knew her. Mm -hmm. Um, she was also recorded by uh, David, David Rycroft. Rycroft yes. um, it's in the um, Hugh Tracy series, mm -hmm. that recording. So mm -hmm. she has a, a kind of a wider historical presence. Mm -hmm. um, but I wonder if you could speak a little bit to the possibilities of her as, as a kind of um, ancestral presence for women musicians in South Africa. I, I seem to remember that maybe Tunokwe and um, um, Buzi Mplongo also mm -hmm. claimed her. These are Zulu women guitarists, mm -hmm. which itself is a mm -hmm. kind of controversial place to occupy. Um, but they talked about her as their kind of um, spiritual, central musical right. spirit. And here, the, in, in contrast to that, I'm thinking of the importance of a person in jazz like Billie Holiday, that, who has become sort of the musical ancestor of a lot of women singers in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, she was also of Satama B. Benjamin, who I worked with, who is from Cape Town. Um, but she didn't have a, a Zulu lineage in her, um, in her background, so it, it, was, it wasn't a natural connection for her. So I'd be interested to know how you think her sound, perhaps, or who she, who she is as a historical figure, how, has she shaped your thinking about who you are as a, um, a woman, South African woman performer? Princess Makokoga Dinu Zulu um, is a very important historical figure. Um, for for me personally, but for a lot of women, both my generation and younger, uh, both as a woman and as a musician. But interestingly enough, before her, there was another woman, uh, Unoktela Dube, who, who was a... Um, a community builder, nation builder, uh, a teacher who was also very active in, she created music, she wrote music, and she was active in, 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 in building the nation or, or rather empowering uh, women, right? And, and the interesting thing is that the music becomes an extension of themselves, but it is not the reason they, 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 they live. I make a living through music. They lived their lives through music. So historically, they become important also because they were very affirmed, they were strongly affirmed and strong feminists in in, in, in the context of a, a female who lives her life to do what destiny has, has, has determined for her, rather than bemoaning her being a woman and my life is miserable. They were not that at all. Um, they didn't go out and burn their bras, for instance. They did what needed to be done because families needed to be taken care of, children needed to be raised, communities needed to be uplifted. And they did this um, because it was important work to do. Princess Makoko, now the music of, of Noctela Dube, who happened to be the first wife of the first president of the African National Congress, as a matter of fact, her music is now, is annotated, right? There's a booklet of her work. Sharif Keita, who is a professor of anthropology in Connecticut, I think, has her material at his fingertips like that. Princess Makoko Gatino Zulu, on the other hand, had her work um, recorded by um, um, Rycroft, right? David Rycroft. And I guess it's one of those sad situations where in Zulu, there's an expression that says, Indugu entle ikaula ezizweni. Indugu is a, a, a stick. Entle ubuhle is beauty. It is an implement. So Indugu, in this instance, would, is the idiom refers to an implement 
that that is used by 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 those from far off by by strangers by visitors and not much appreciated within its own space a prophet is not recognized in his own town mm -hmm. and and this was long before mm -hmm. south africa even thought it was possible to celebrate democracy years way 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 before all of that Princess Makoko, Princess Makoko's work was embraced in that way. There are, if I'm not making a mistake, there are at least three CD recordings of hers where she just said, took her Makoyana and Ugu Buluake and started playing and singing and David put this material down. And thank you to that, years later, we were able to hear it and reference it and, 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 and use it in our work. The things she talks about also in her music um, are very interesting because she talks about, she talks about love. She talks about, she declares love for a man, which in those days would not have been seen as kind of cool you know, but she was hip like that. But then also she sings about war and about and about about how the nation is decimated by unpatriotic beings. Um, and she says, "Why? Why are we being killed? What have we done? What What is it that we've done wrong?" And she she and the, the appeal, the plea rather, is to the king, Ushaga, and, and, and she says, Udingane, who is Shaga's younger brother, Udingane, siyabulawa wa zulu, siyabulawa udingane, senze nina. What have we done? Why are we being killed in this Zulu kingdom? She talks about, about she sings a lullaby, for instance, where she, 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 she says, why, this man who disappears, she's singing to her baby, right? But she's actually telling the husband, um, telling him off. Um, you come back here, you go, you, you take off, you go off, and you do whatever you choose to do. You come back and you expect to be loved and appreciated. Um, look at you, look at your stomach, you big fat something, you know, that kind of vibe. And, 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 and she, she, she said things that were, that could be seen as provocative or controversial. And she said these things. And, and generally you would say, okay, she was ahead of her time. But I've often asked the question, and unfortunately, I don't have references, musical references of the time to find out what women were in fact singing about in those days. But I, I, I have a sense that th that's the kind of independence that women were allowed to have. I mean, she, she was wife number nine, I think, of the Butelezi um, um, coterie of, <laughs> of wives, right? And, and, and also if you consider that her marriage to Butelez was not really because she and, and, and the chief uh, of that particular village were in love. No, it was a land settlement deal. It was a land settlement deal. So her patriotism comes through in that way because her brother, in trying to find a solution to the land uh, um, dispute offers her as a wife to the chief, the Butele's chief. She is madly in love with somebody else from the Zuidet land. And she ends up marrying this man because it will help avoid war. Now, that's probably nothing new. There's probably nothing new about that. Probably it's happened somewhere in some other place. But any woman, any person, who is able to, to, to give up of this big, great love that they have for one human being in order to make sure that her country, her clan, her village is saved 
for me, uh, deserves accolades, big, big accolades. And Princess Makoko was one of those women.